Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's session, we will look at some commonly asked interview questions for AWS SysOps. Now, whether you are preparing for an interview or you're just looking to enhance your skills for AWS SysOps, then this video is just for you. Now, in this particular video, we will explore the top 15 AWS SysOps interview questions and answers tailored for both freshers as well as experienced candidates. Uh, it could be troubleshooting EC2 instances, managing your auto scaling, or securing your S3. So this video will equip with uh, you with all the knowledge you need to shine in your next interview. Once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So let's get started with this. The first question I have is, what is the role of an AWS SysOps administrator? So your sysops, so that's basically one um, area. So in AWS, we have solutions architect, we have developers, likewise, we have sysops. So as a sysops administrator, you will be responsible for deploying, managing, and operating a, a very scalable, highly available, and fault-tolerant infrastructure on the AWS platform. So, you know, basically setting up the infrastructure, which is highly available, which is easily scalable, which is fault tolerant. So that would be the responsibility of AWS SysOps administrator. They will also uh, monitor the overall health of the system, manage the backups of your um, uh, data troubleshooting issues within the cloud environment. So that's basically what a SysOps uh, admin will be doing on the AWS platform. The next question we have is what tools can you use to monitor AWS services? So AWS provides us with lots of tools that we can use for monitoring our um, AWS services. So we have tools like Amazon CloudWatch, which can be used to monitor your uh, performance metrics and also capture the logs of your applications. You have AWS Config Service, which can be used to keep a track of any configuration changes within AWS resources. Then we can make use of AWS Trusted Advisor uh, which offers you a real-time guidance um, to improve your security and the overall performance of your uh, uh, application and your infrastructure and then finally we can make use of your cloud trial which which is your auditing service and we can use this to log all of your api calls which can be used for auditing purposes so we can make use of these services to um, you know basically monitor your aws services and your application as well the next question we have is how do you handle high CPU utilization in an EC2 instance? So um, for this, we will need to check if there are any processes that are running on your EC2 instances. So for this, we can use tools like SSH or AWS Systems Manager. So we we'll need to first uh, log into the EC2 instance. We we'll need to connect to the EC2 instance to uh, check if there are any processes that are running. So we can either do a SSH or we can make use of your session manager to uh, connect with the EC2 instance. Uh, then we can also think about scaling the instances. So we can scale the instances vertically, which is increasing the instance size, or we can in, um, uh, scale horizontally, which is adding more EC2 instances. Then we can look at optimizing the app application workload, or we can implement caching mechanisms. Um, you know, if it's a very read heavy application then we can make use of your caching instead of sending the request to the original uh, database the next question we have is what is the difference between vertical and horizontal scaling so vertical scaling is basically where you will be changing the instance size so basically you'll be increasing the cpu capacity the memory capacity we call that as your vertical scaling so under this like for example uh, let's say you have an EC2 instance running on 3t3.medium, then we can change that to 3t3.large, which gives you higher CPU and memory capacity. So basically increasing the um, uh, capacity of your existing instances, we call that as your vertical scaling. Now horizontal scaling on the other hand is in increasing the number of instances itself. So basically we'll be adding more instances and that way we will be distributing the load across the uh, EC2 instances. So vertical scaling is uh, increasing the capacity on the existing instances. Horizontal scaling is adding more instances to your um, uh, scaling auto scaling groups. Next question we have is how do you automate regular backups for an RDS instance? So for this, we can enable automated backups. So RDS provides you an option with uh, 
uh, manual backups as well as your automated backups so we can enable automated backups and we can also specify the retention period so how long do you want the backups to be available maximum you can have is 35 days you can also make use of this service called aws backup which can be used for uh, centralized backup management and then you also have the option of creating manual snapshots at any point you want so uh, you can either do it from the console or you can make use of the cli commands or sdks for additional control the next question we have is explain the use of auto scaling in aws so auto scaling is used when you want to scale in or scale out your ec2 instances now this is mainly done when you want to make your application highly available and you can do this by automating the process of adding additional instances as well as removing the instances based on the demand so if the demand is high then add more instances if the demand is low then remove the instances we can automate that by making use of your auto scaling groups but this will ensure that we have an optimized cost uh, because your auto scaling group will launch the instances when the, the instances are actually needed right so when your traffic is low then you will have any less instances and that way you'll end up paying less when compared to paying in a uh, paying you know for instances though you're not using them so that's basically how your auto scaling group works next question we have is how do you secure data in amazon s3 so uh to secure your data in s3 we can make use of your bucket policies we can also make use of your im policies to control uh, who can access the s3 buckets who can access the objects inside the s3 bucket what actions they can take inside the buckets all those things can be controlled then we can also enable encryption which is a server side encryption so you have s3 provided keys you have kms provided keys all those things can be leveraged we can also enforce HTTPS for data in transit. So if your data is moving from one place to another place, then make sure HTTPS is enabled. And then finally, you can also enable MFA delete for any sensitive data. So uh, having an additional layer of security for any data, uh, which is very sensitive for you. Um, and only when you provide MFA, you will be able to delete that data. The next question we have is what are some common AWS cost optimization strategies? So for this, we can make use of this AWS Cost Explorer service that we have. Now by using this service, we can basically you know, get a view of how the usage is happening, how I'm being charged for, you know, for what usage I'm being charged uh, within the AWS. So you can use this to uh, get an uh, idea about your, uh, uh, you know, unused resources or any underutilized resources. You can identify those things. Then you can also purchase reserved instances or savings plans if you have a very predictable workload so you know what is your workload in that scenario you can make use of your reserved instances or savings plans or you can also leverage spot instances for any non-critical tasks so if you have any you know, non-critical workload um, then you can make use of your spot instances and then you can also make use of your auto scaling groups to handle this variable demand efficiently so launch the instances when they are needed and then terminate the instances when they're not needed so these are some cost optimization strategies that you can follow. The next question we have is how do you troubleshoot a failed EC2 instance status check? So uh, generally when we talk about your EC2 instances, you have two uh, checks. One is your instance status check. Now, if you get a failure on this, this basically indicates that there's a problem with the instance itself. Now to fix this, you can try rebooting the EC2 instance. You can also check the logs of your EC2 instance from the AWS console. The other check you have is your system status check failure. Now this is likely due to any hardware issues at AWS or any network issues on AWS side. For this, you can try to stop and start the instance which will move it to a healthy host which is basically moving the host to a healthy hardware that way your instance will become online and all the checks will pass and you can start working with your ec2 instances the next question we have is what is aws elastic load balancer and how does it work so uh, elastic load balancer is mainly used when you want to distribute your incoming traffic and this traffic is distributed across multiple targets now targets will be your ec2 instances so under this we have different different types we have the application load balancer which supports HTTP and HTTPS traffic. 
Then we have the network load balancer which supports your TCP traffic and this is mainly used for high performance um, at your network layer. And then finally you have the gateway load balancer uh, and this is mainly used with your third party virtual appliances like your uh, firewall appliances. So you want to make use of your gateway load balancers. If you want all of your traffic to flow through the, your, your gateway load balancer then you can make use of this. The next question we have is how does AWS ensure high availability in an application? So uh, AWS ensures your high availability. So there are lots of options that are available. So one is you can deploy your application across multiple availability zones for redundancy. Uh, then enable auto scaling to handle your demand spikes. Then make use of your elastic load balancing for distributing your traffic. And then set up your backup, set up your disaster recovery. So for this, you can make use of services like AWS backups, glaciers to basically you know, back up your data and store it for uh, future usage. So basically you can leverage all these options to make your application highly available. The next question we have is how do you configure a VPC for a web application? So VPC is basically your network in AWS. So to begin with this, you will be creating a VPC and within the VPC, you'll be having your public and private subnets. Now your public subnet is where you will be setting up your web servers and then private subnets is where you'll be setting up your database. So the front end will be in public subnet, the back end will be in the private subnet. Then you'll be configuring internet gateway. So if you want to give internet access to your public subnet, then you'll make use of the internet gateway. And if you want to give internet access to your private uh, subnet, then you will make use of the NAT gateway, which will give you outbound internet access for your instances running in the private subnet. And then you'll also need to update your route tables to route the traffic. Like, you know, if the traffic is coming from the internet gateway, it needs to go to the public subnet. And if the traffic is coming from the uh, NAT gateway, it should go to the private subnet. So you'll need to configure that as well. The next question we have is what is Amazon CloudFormation and how is it used? So CloudFormation is your infrastructure as code of service that you have in AWS. And we can use this to provision our resources by basically writing a code. Now this code can be written in JSON as well as your YAML templates. All right, so CloudFormation is your infrastructure as code of service that you have in AWS. So you can use this to uh, deploy your applications, manage your infrastructure updates, and also replicate your infrastructure across multiple environments. Like let's say you have a dev environment, you have a staging environment, you have a UAT environment. So you can make use of the same code to set up the infrastructure by making use of your cloud formation. The next question we have is how does AWS ensure compliance with security standards? So AWS ensures uh, compliance through security certifications. So you have certifications like ISO 27001, you have SOC, you have GDPR. So, you know, it makes use of these certifications to ensure compliance. Then you have tools like AWS config, which can be used to uh, basically keep a track of your configurations, your compliance monitoring. Uh, then you have AWS Artifact, which can be used for documentations and audit reports to basically maintain the documentation to maintain the audit reports and that's how your AWS ensures that uh, you, it is following all the compliance, it has all the necessary certifications, it has all the necessary services that can be utilized to basically ensure compliance. The next question we have is what is the difference between CloudWatch and CloudTrial? Now CloudWatch is your monitoring service. So you can use this to monitor your resources, you can use this to monitor your performance, as well as um, uh, capture the logs of your applications along with their metrics. Now, CloudTrail, on the other hand, it's your auditing service, which can be used to keep a track of all the API calls that are happening to your AWS, as well as your user activity for security auditing. So you may, maybe you want to know uh, when an instance was launched, who launched that instance, or when an instance was terminated and who terminated that instance. So all those activity can be captured by making use of your cloud trial. And CloudWatch on the other hand is when you want to monitor your CPU, your memory, your application performance. So that's where we can make use of your CloudWatch service. And that 
brings us to the end of our some of the commonly asked interview questions as part of your uh, AWS SOPS interview. If you found this video helpful, uh, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel for more content on AWS and DevOps. And if you are, if you want me to cover any other uh, topic, please uh, leave it in the comments section. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.